Google dorking is a technique that hackers can use to find information that might have been accidentally exposed to the internet. Today, we'll check out some advanced Googling techniques on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. When most people think about finding vulnerable devices on the internet, they may think about Shodan. Now, Shodan is famous for finding all kinds of things that might have been accidentally connected to the internet and leaking too much information. But it turns out, we don't actually need to use Shodan in order to do this. We can just use Google dorking instead. Now, Google dorking uses some of Google's innate abilities to locate various things that we can find via specific search strings. And this can be log files, error files, things like webcams that are exposed directly to the internet, and even administration panels that allowed us to get into a device that doesn't require a password. Now, this is a great way to use a simple browser and a Google search to find devices that are vulnerable. And we'll go through a couple different Google dorks today that can lead us to all sorts of different things that might be kind of surprising. Now, one thing I need to point out is that although this is a powerful technique, we need to make sure that we're not logging into anything that requires a password, even if that password is shown in plain text, because that's the line at which it becomes illegal access to a device that we don't have permission to use. If you have any problems doing this, you can check out the Nullbyte article linked in the description for troubleshooting and other general advice. Once you have a web browser connected to the internet, then you're ready to go. Now, this might not be the page you think of when you think of hacking, but what if I told you you could probably get the login and password to a server on the internet using just a Google search in a matter of seconds? Well, that is using dorking, and we're going to get into what that is today because it's kind of related to what we've already covered about using search operators, but instead the goal is to use those search operators to go after a specific type of target. Now we cover things that are useful like removing search results and looking for specific file types, but if we really want to go crazy, we need to actually target specific things that we know are vulnerable and can be used to dig deeper into a system. Now these are going to be things like accidentally exposed logs, uh, which might include attempts to log in uh, that failed. This could reveal usernames and passwords. We could see configuration files that show us all sorts of details that aren't supposed to be made public. So let's get into this by exploring some of the most basic ones. First and most basic, let's say we just want to see an older version of a website. This simple operator you might be familiar with and it's just cached uh, and then whichever site you want. Let's do no byte. And we'll see previous older versions of the no byte site. Great, sort of useful, but what can we really get going? Well, okay. Let's step it up and start looking for log files, rather than just files that might have been deleted or taken off the internet. We can go ahead and type all in text and username and then file type log. Uh, and a colon there. Now this combination will actually go, huh, that's my article. Now this combination will actually go ahead and search for any log type files which contain the username string. And that could be a problem depending on whether or not this log file is exposing other credentials. Now let's go ahead and jump in and see what one of them looks like. So we can see this is a one that doesn't actually contain anything interesting, but if we combine that with a limiter for the last year, we can actually begin to search through this log file for juicy things like passwords or anything else that might pique our interest. Now by digging around, I can virtually guarantee we're going to find some sort of username or password because that's just kind of the nature of these exposed logs. Let's see. Um, and this is also a really good way to find usernames which, trust me, will greatly narrow down the number of passwords you have to spray at a target if you are doing a brute force attack. That's because typically these sorts of logins could have basically any uh, username associated, so you would need to go through a complete list of every possible username and every possible password that you want to actually attempt to uh, 
a brute force a system with, which can lead up to a whole bunch of results. So you can dramatically cut that down by locating usernames for various systems, and then just kind of hanging out and looking for, uh, there we go, web dev passwords. So this sort of information can be really, really helpful. You might need to dig around and attempt to find this, but you will generally be able to find usernames and passwords in these sorts of files. Okay, so what else can we find? Well, let's go ahead and try another one, which is in URL slash PROC slash self slash CWD. Now, if you wanna find FTP servers, we can type in in URL, oh, sorry, in title, index of, and then in URL, FTP. Now, what this should do is index any index pages that are associated with the FTP server. And here we can see that we might be able to download files or find some internal directories on the server, which could be useful if uh, we need to know about the manual for a, why am I downloading a PDF? For a Vigor 2950 WAN. And especially useful if we want it to be completely in Chinese. All right, so moving on from there, of course, we can do things that kind of are associated with uh, services like Shodan, like find webcams via the specific string that they will expose to Google if they're accidentally put just facing the internet with no sorts of restrictions at all. Now, an example might be for a webcam in title, webcam XP five. So this is a type of webcam, which when exposed, we should be able to just click on. I actually haven't seen the mobile version. That's not gonna work because I'm not installing Flash on the sketchy thing, but let's see if we can find something. How about this? Where are we? What do we see? There we go. We got some beautiful boats bobbing in the water somewhere where it is day. I have no idea. Whoa, what is this? Something's happening. Oh my God, this camera wheels around. Whoa. Okay, we've got a lot of context clues. I don't know what's happening. This place is crazy. They've got flying bushes. They got boats. They got everything. So we're gonna get out of here because it, whoa, it's moving again. Okay, I don't know if they know that we're in, but we're getting out. All right, a truly Shodan-like experience. So aside from locating uh, cameras, some of which are whipping around, uh, we can also locate some sensitive things in the uh, databases that actually contain passwords using a dork that was written by a friend of mine named Sven. So this is just db underscore password and then file type env. Now, as you can instantly see the, from the preview, we have successfully found the username and password to a whole bunch of databases. So this is exactly what we're looking for. Let's say if we wanted to just harvest, ooh, cars123 exclamation point, how secure. Um, oh, and it's for seaworldcars.com. See, the, the, it's never as hard as you think. So this could be, let's say, if you wanted to be someone who's putting together a word list of common passwords that are just exposed to the internet, this is how password lists are made. Uh, these dorks are extremely powerful, I feel like I say that a lot, and are able to bring you the passwords for a variety of services that might currently be up and running. So I'm gonna try in the past year, and oh god, that's a lot still of just things we could probably log into which you absolutely should not do because you don't have permission, but hey, look at this secure password. They really took their security ser uh, seriously by exposing this directly to the internet. All right, so that is a brief overview of cameras. I also wanted to show you a couple, or sorry, a brief overview of the various dorks you can run in order to get passwords. I wanted to show you a couple others that I found that are really interesting. So this one is for websites that are hosted on GitHub or are using a Git repository. You can go ahead and get into some of the code that you're not supposed to and start looking for things that might be able to get you deeper in the system. 
Uh, this is one that exposes uh, PHP variables, which could allow us to get into, again, more information that we might not supposed to be able to access that is accidentally exposed. That's kind of a theme here, accidentally, accidentally exposed files that lead us to be able to divulge more than we're supposed to. I'm getting out of here. Here we can see that there is, uh, let's see, some more Apache server configuration files, which uh, could lead us into ooh, all sorts of interesting stuff. Um, I'm, I saw a password variable there. And this is my favorite. This is for people who accidentally leave uh, Nessus network scan reports on the internet. So it's an in title, we're looking for report, um, and then the name of one of these various scanners. Nessus is a great vulnerability scanner. So then uh, we're filtering by, oops, here we go. We're filtering by file type PDF. So if we go ahead and let's see if I can just filter by semi-recent, payment card industry report, like some bank, um, penetration testing report for Bitcoin exchange company. Wonderful, someone did our work for us. So somebody already knocked on the uh, doors to this cybersecurity company and gave it a D. Oh, well that's terrible. Well, let's find out why. I don't care, but if I was an attacker, I would probably want to see this pie chart that tells me where this company sucks at security. That's pretty helpful if I'm planning an attack, because it means that somebody has already got in there, and I, I'm, I'm not going to say too much about the way companies typically respond to penetration testing reports, but let's just say that they don't always do what they're supposed to do. So here I can see that this uh, wonderful business of TAMP demo account okay, well, maybe not this one, <laughs> is uh, vulnerable or not vulnerable in a couple specific ways. But being able to look up log files that are just exposed to uh, give people an idea of where a company is weak is a great way to let everybody who wants to break into your company know how you failed your last security audit. With the right Google Dork search terms, you can find log files and configuration files directly exposed to the internet that dump plain text passwords to massive databases. This and other things might be tempting to log into, but in general, you should be aware that the limit is if you find something on the internet and it doesn't require a password to log in, you're fine. But even if you find plain text passwords to a server or something like that, resist the temptation to log in because that is the limit at which you do not have permission to join and thus you're actually possibly committing a crime, depending on where you live. Now, it's important to keep that in mind because do Google dorking turns up all sorts of interesting things. So along your travels, make sure that you do connect to webcams that allow you to without a password, but do not that use perhaps a default password that is easy to guess. If you have any trouble with this and you need some more instructions or some troubleshooting, you can also check out the Null Byte article linked in the description. That's all we have for this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any ideas for future episodes, send me a message on Twitter, because I'd love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.